Hey guys, while I wait for the lacquer on the Filco 4910 40 to cure, I decided to dive right into the GE810 cabinet. I took the veneer off the top, it came off really, really easy. I just got it started with this chisel and it just peeled right off in large strips. I used a heat gun in a couple uh, stubborn areas, but uh, it's no problem whatsoever. The only odd thing I found was that there's an odd transition between the first four or five inches and then the rest of it. And there's a bit of a gap here too. It looks like there was some kind of old filler that had uh, disintegrated over time, so I'm going to have to put some kind of filling agent in here and then sand it to, to fill this in. There's a bit of damage on this side. I'm hoping that this is just uh, will come off when I uh, strip the old finish off. And then there's a little veneer loss down here. I will use the scraps from the top to patch that up. The other side is in pretty good shape. I got really lucky on the cabinet in that. I just had to take a bunch of screws out and I was able to take all the stuff off the front. And the uh, speaker cloth just uh, came right off too. The old adhesive must have really just worn out. If I can find an exact replacement cloth, I'll go ahead and put some new on. Otherwise, I'll try to wash this and then uh, glue it back on. There's a little GE logo. It's just held on by a nut. I'm not sure what to do about this old patina. I think I might just leave it like that. Likewise on this. It does appear to be brass, but it's, it's tarnished with age. I suppose maybe I could polish it up, but then I'd probably lose the filled in coloring. Um, I'll think about that. But uh, I'll save that for later for sure. Uh, here's the speaker. It's in pretty good shape. No tears. Here's the safety glass, just like on that Foca. It's a sandwich of two pieces of glass with a membrane in between. And here is the only problem, real problem I've encountered so far. There are bubbles in between the two sheets of glass and that is visible, unfortunately. For now, I'll just live with it, but I think eventually I may get a new piece of glass cut. I'm not sure if you can get safety glass uh, easily though. And for safety's sake, you really do need to use this. Because if that picture tube uh, implodes, this will protect you from any flying glass. If I just used a, a regular like, window pane glass, that might shatter. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure if this metal comes out. Oh yeah, okay, great. <laughs> That'll make life easier too. So I can strip the wood. Um, there we go. And put this brass on the side. So next up I'm going to strip the sides and then prepare the new veneer for the top. Uh, I'll pull that out and show you what it looks like. Here's a new piece of veneer. It's that same face cut mahogany like I used in the Foco 491040. And just like on that set, I'm going to treat both the back side of this and the top of the cabinet with several layers of diluted tight bond tube glue, which I'll let dry for about 24 hours and then iron the veneer on and then trim the edges to fit. Uh, then I'll be staining this brown mahogany. And I'll have to paint this. It's kind of a, a sea green, I guess. Flicking off quite badly. Should go pretty quick. Certainly a lot more manageable than that Foca. Considerably smaller, but just being a tabletop set. I stripped that area with the nasty scar on the side, and luckily that was just in the finish and what is fine underneath. What I wasn't expecting though is that the base veneer wood is quite reddish mahogany which makes me wonder why they would bother using mahogany if they were just going to coat, coat it with this um, light brown looking finish. I grabbed a uh, strip of the new veneer just to do some color testing and unfortunately nothing I have is even remotely close. This was brown mahogany toner this is golden mahogany stain and this is medium brown toner um, so as you can see not even remotely close 
but I did pull out a Filco 37 630 radio, which is a pretty darn good match, I think. And this, I'm pretty sure, is what they call Van Dyke Brown Toner. So I ordered up a couple cans of that. Hopefully it won't take too long to arrive. In the meantime, I'll continue working on patching up the veneer damage. I'm just about done with the veneer repairs. Got a new strip down in there, just a few more little dings here and there to clean up. Then I'm going to strip the rest of this old finish off using a citrus based stripper and then finally put on the new top. And then I still have to wait for the new toner lacquer to show up, so I started poking around with the chassis. If you recall in the earlier videos on this set I did almost a year ago, uh, I was able to get uh, good sound and uh, a picture of sorts, although the this, this sink was horribly off. Well, I've been doing some poking around underneath this chassis and I have a few ideas why. It turns out there actually have been a number of repairs done to this set. Uh, the, the soldering was done fairly well so I didn't pick up on it right away, but when I started checking the component values uh, it became pretty apparent. Also the manufacturing differences. Most of the old caps are this wax paper style. These yellowish waxy cylinders like this but here and there I, I noticed that like there's this yellow guy here white one here and um, this giant one that looks kind of like a mica capacitor but uh, this is actually a paper cap it's just encapsulated to look like a uh, a mica capacitor oh, let's see if I can find a real one uh, here's a real here's a real mica capacitor uh, it also turns out that this and this and a number of other ones that have been replaced are not the right values. They're close, but not quite. This should actually be a 0 .01, just like the capacitor up here. And what these two capacitors form is part of their vertical integrator that makes the sweep for the, uh, the vertical on the, on the picture. The other uh, problem is this guy, which is, should be a 0.062, not a 0.05, and that's part of the vertical hold, which could also be a big problem with the sink circuits, and so on. So what I did is I went through the original parts list, checked my uh, stock on hand, and ordered up any ones I didn't have. Hopefully those will be here in a few days, but in the meantime I do have about half of these on hand, so I'm going to start going through them. Um, I found a couple other things of interest about this set while studying the schematic. One, let's turn the chassis down here. Okay, here's the top of the chassis. The picture tube would have been sitting here, but I removed it for safekeeping while I work on the set. Here is the big power transformer rectifiers, power supply filter caps, high voltage circuitry, some of the sweep tubes in here, audio output I believe is this guy, and here's the tuner. So a few things of interest. One is the oscillator mixer tube is encased in a heavy lead shield that's to eliminate or at least reduce something called microphonics which is a type of oscillation that can build up inside the tube also the filament for that tube is felt, fed with a uh, a very clean DC supply there's a selenium rectifier underneath that rectifies the 6.3 volts AC that goes to the rest of the tubes to make DC and then this capacitor it's 2000 microfarads at only 6 volts filters out any ripple on that, uh, that's what the filament on this uses. Another odd thing is that the high voltage circuitry, there's no metal cage over this, it's just exposed like this. Normally this is completely encased in a metal box so you can't poke your fingers in here and get a shock. They must have figured that it being inside the case was all the uh, protection that would be needed. These capacitors are fairly easy to get at and unmount, so I am going to try to unmount these, uncrimp them, and restuff them from below. 
I'll have to wait on the skinny Nichicon capacitors I've ordered. And each of these is four suctions, so I, I measured them and they are uh, fairly small, so I think I'll be able to stuff four caps inside each of these cans. We'll see how that goes. Otherwise, uh, just a bunch of uh, old paper caps to replace underneath.